Retention marketing is difficult. It's actually really, really difficult. And the bad news is that it's going to get a lot harder before it gets easier. The good news is that it will get easier, and we're about to tell you how. Before we get, before we get into that, I want to highlight two key problems. The first one is a problem that we've highlighted exactly one year ago here at Lifecycle. And that problem is around sending the newsletter. A lot of marketers are still very much reliant on sending out the newsletter. And personalizing that newsletter at scale is extremely difficult because you're sending out millions and millions of emails and personalizing it and making it highly individual is extremely challenging. The workflow to personalize these newsletters at scale is also very difficult. But most importantly, all of this leads to bad customer experiences. So what we've done in the last year is that we worked with our customers and prospects to iterate, improve, and release the very first and only retail-specific newsletter campaign builder. And how did we do? So every time we release something, we look at two key things. The first is the efficiency. Do we actually make marketers' lives easier? Do we help them do their job? And most importantly, do we drive additional value by creating better customer experiences? So regarding efficiency, when we spoke to retailers and identified their challenges, it took them anywhere between two to four hours to segment and create these personalized newsletters. With this new interface, it now takes them up to 10 minutes to create a personalized newsletter. From the value side, the combination of the new interface and the predictive algorithms generates up to 95% increase in revenue per email. So we've made huge progress towards solving that problem, but that problem has evolved. So what is that problem? I have two questions for you. One is on the easy side and one slightly harder. Can anyone tell me what is the biggest frustration of today's consumer is? Clearly, no one has been paying any attention for all the too many emails. Yes, exactly, too many emails. Out of the consumer census, the 4,000 people that we've interviewed, 74% of them said that they received too many emails. The second question is, can anyone tell me what's wrong with this number? It's high. Yes. What I want to know is who the hell are the other 26% that want to receive emails? If anyone can tell me where I can find these unicorns that want to receive more marketing messages, I would love to have a chat with them. But most importantly, it's not that we send too many emails. All of these emails are highly relevant. 71% of shoppers said that they receive products that are out of stock. 66 receive products that they're not interested in. And 56 receive products that they have already purchased. And this is not rocket science. This is actually basic stuff. You don't expect to go into a physical store looking for a t-shirt and the shop assistant teasing you with a product that might or might not be out of stock. It'd be a terrible experience. And yet, these are the experiences that we're delivering to our customers today. So what is the solution? How do we solve this problem today? Well, the good news is that we already shifted from sending batch and blast emails to a more tailored, personalized automation campaigns. And even though automation campaigns respond to customer behavior, they're still not the full solution. And here's why. I'm gonna walk you through a use case. And I'm gonna start off very, very uh, with a very simple post-purchase campaign. So someone places an order, you wait, depending on what your brand does, and you send them an email. So good so far. You might add an if condition, depending on whether they click on an email or open an email, to then maybe tailor the message further down in the journey. This is where it gets interesting. You add a bit of segmentation you want to personalize based on the audience that receives the message. It might be a particular category, particularly segment at risk, VIP, whatever it might be, but you add a bit of segmentation to it. Then you might want to add a split test. And for those of you who are paying attention, you might notice there's a very particular trend in my slides that 
the color of the background represents the anxiety levels of the marketer. All right, so this is where it gets messy, because you start adding additional channels, because email is just one of the channels. You have Snapchat, you have Instagram, you have Facebook. You have all of these channels that you still need to communicate with your, through, with your customer. And then you realize it's just one of many campaigns they need to create. And at this stage, I've removed the labels, because let's be honest, no one has any idea what's going on. So I've completely removed the labels. And you realize they have to create many other campaigns. Welcome, card abandonment, browser abandonment, VIP, at risk. All of these campaigns need to be created. And for those of you who are really paying attention, you know the next color of the next slide is going to be. It's going to be red. And you're probably thinking, how can this get more compli complicated? How can this possibly get worse? Well, I'm about to show you. Because all of these campaigns need to be talking to each other. All of these campaigns need to be talking to each other because you need to ensure that they're mutually exclusive, that they're prioritized in the correct way, and that the customers don't receive too many messages. So you spent weeks, maybe months, maybe years, creating the perfect structure for your automation campaigns. And you feel like a superstar marketer, and you feel like this is something you've created. But in reality, you end up with this. You end up with a mess that you don't really know how to fix. But you try to fix it. You go in there, you try to fix it, but you don't know how. So you get your colleagues involved. But your colleagues have no idea what's going on. But you have one champion. You have one individual who's willing to take the risk. And they go in, and they make a few adjustments, and then boom, the whole thing goes terribly wrong. And your customers get a bad customer experience. They get a terrible experience. And don't get me wrong, if you're at this stage, it means you're pretty, pretty far ahead in terms of every other retail brand out there. So it's a good problem to have, but it's still a problem because all of these campaigns are very manual to create. They rely on basic logic. They're rarely optimized. They're very hard to understand for you and your colleagues and the rest of your team. And they still end up sending too many messages, which once again leads to bad customer experiences. So I said we're going to talk about the solution. So therefore, I'm going to introduce Al to tell you how Metro is going to solve it in 2020. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, the question is, thanks, Joel. The question is, uh, how do we stop our customers feeling like this, overloaded by the fire hose of marketing messages that they're receiving? Or in other words, how do we enable you to send less, e less messages, but increase the relevance of each one so people engage more and you still earn the same amount of revenue from each marketing campaign? The key is obviously to move away from batch and blast mar marketing onto personalized one-to-one -one messaging, which means sending the right message, the right content, to the right person at the right time. But how do you do this? What tools do you use? Is it marketing automation? Um, is, marketing automation is true one-to-one -one messaging and an essential part of any, any uh, retail marketer's uh, arsenal. Um, but as Jalal said, using marketing automation at scale can be complex as you have to manage complex flows and prioritization rules. But also there's a bigger problem. Existing marketing automation tools are merely reactive in that they only react to things that have already happened on your website or brand. If you think about it, this is the easy bit. Half the battle's already won. If someone's engaged enough to come to your website, add something to their basket, and abandon it before paying, they're already pretty engaged. So it's not hard to send them an email to get them back. But how do you reach out to those people who are not coming to your website, those people who are still engaged but not coming every single time? How do you keep those people engaged and informed what's going on with your brand? What if we could like, generate new opportunities to reach out to people with one-to-one messaging and use marketing automation to automatically send that? That's what we call predictive automation. Predictive automation is the key to doing one-to-one -one personalized messaging at scale. It turns the concept of automation on its head, so that instead of just acting to things that already happened, it starts to use AI to generate new opportunities to reach people with exactly the right message at the right time. It's a powerful strategy that can deliver great results and working really hard to make it part of the Ametria platform. Let's see how it works. This is Mike. Mike is a loyal customer of a men's lifestyle, uh, lifestyle brand that sells fashion and beauty goods. In the next seven days, Ametra has identified three opportunities to reach out to him with a one-to-one -one personalized uh, message opportunity. 
Uh, first of all, we have a product replenishment opportunity. He often buys the same moisturizer about once every 60 days, and it's been about 50 days since the last time he bought it. So we can send him a message to remind him to stock up. Secondly, we have anniversary opportunity. It's been about a year since his first order, so we can send him a message to say thanks for being such a loyal and great customer. And thirdly, product releases. We just released a new type, a new range of baseball bats, the caps. And you can see he likes baseball caps. He's brought them before with our brand, and he's been browsing them on the website recently. So we think these might be a great opportunity to automatically send them to him. So Ametria can assign a score to each one of these opportunities, which is based about how likely Mike is to engage with this individual message. Then our optimization algorithms can look at those, uh, those different opportunities and the scores and work out the optimal sending strategy to reach him in the most engaging way. So for example, in this case, we might decide that to send the anniversary campaign now, we might decide to wait for a bit and send the new products campaign next uh, week, for example. We might decide actually don't send the replenishment campaign because we risk overloading him. Um, yeah, so this is a really powerful technique. We're working hard to make it inside the Ametria platform, and we're launching the Ametria Predictive Marketing Hub. Uh, this dashboard will show you all the different types of uh, camp camp predictive campaigns that you can run, predict the opportunities that you might be able to generate for them, and the expected uplift. Then it makes it really easy to, set to get these things up and running. Now, I've worked in the AI industry for about 15 years, and to be honest, I don't fully trust AI yet. And uh, speaking to our customers, it's clear you guys don't fully trust it either. Um, it's clear that you want uh, AI to support and automate marketing actions on your behalf, but you don't want to completely give over the controls. You still want insight and control into what's going on. So one of the principles of AI and Metria is that we always strive to be transparent, open, and above all, not a black box. We don't want to build systems that you can't see what's going on and don't trust. We want to build systems that you can explain fully. Uh, although the machine is automating things, you can see inside it, see what's going on, and trust it fully. So in the, in the zone of predictive automation, this means that we we'll always start when you're setting up a campaign by showing you the insight and data that powers that campaign. So in this case, we might be showing uh, cross-sale product journeys that powers a cross-sale replenishment campaign, for example. Um, by showing you this data and explaining what's going on, guiding through making the right settings, we make sure that the system is trustable and you understand fully what's going on effectively. And then with just a few clicks, the metric will automatically set the campaign up for you. Uh, and all things like content, uh, wait times, and uh, other settings are automatically optimized for you. And you can continue to use the, familiar, the tools you're familiar with, so things like A-B tests and send cross-channel messages. The end result is that your customers will receive a constant uh, stream of well-engaging en emails that are balanced out so we don't overload customers. And yeah, bit, bit, uh, and there's no need to set up any flows or prioritization rules to make this happen, basically. Now, predictive automation is a key focus for Metro in 2019 and 2020. We're already running some uh, pilots with clients already. You can see some example here, and you can read more on our web on the Metro Lab section of the website now. Um, so to recap, uh, consumers are feeling overwhelmed with the fire hose and marketing messages they're receiving. Um, it will get worse in a cross-channel world as we move away from email, as they're bombarded from more angles and more devices. And existing marketing automation uh, technologies are both complex and only reactive. The solution is predictive automation, which turns this concept on its head and starts generating new opportunities to reach people in the most engaging way. Thank you very much.